Hello everyone. Welcome to Rich Tech. Myself Karthik Ponnuswamy. Today I am super excited to see you all here because you made a right choice to learn cloud computing with Rich Tech. Guys, I know you are also super excited to learn all these concepts from the scratch. Don't worry. We are going to see from the scratch understanding the basics, understanding the fundamentals is a key part to learn anything bigger in let's say in cloud computing or any programming language or anything. So, with respect to cloud computing, we have to understand the basics first. before we get into aws or gcp or azure or whatever it is right this video we are going to cover it up on uh, the basics strong and then we are going to get deeper into aws later if you guys are new to our channel go ahead and then subscribe to our channel and if you guys like this video hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to hit the notification button so that you don't miss any of our future videos let's get started guys let's start the agenda for cloud computing basics Guys, if you guys see my screen, you guys can see uh, all the list of agenda, whatever the topics which we are going to cover with the cloud computing basics. So first of all, we are going to start learning about what is cloud computing, and why do we need cloud computing, and what is the birthplace for cloud computing, right? And finally, we are going to see who are all the different vendors in the cloud computing area, and then we are going to get deeper into what is client server architecture, and what are the different service models we have, and what are the different deployment models we have with respect to cloud computing. and finally we are going to see about advantages and disadvantages of using cloud computing guys if you guys uh, want to start exploring any aws or azure or anything let's start with cloud computing basics first that is very very important to understand what is cloud computing then let's get deeper into the aws or azure let's start about uh, what is cloud guys if you see here cloud is something but the term the cloud basically refers to a network of remote servers what is a network of remote servers guys it's a collection of remote servers that are accessible over the internet that are accessible over the internet for storing and managing and processing the data there are so many complex uh, people used to say there are so many complex uh, uh, definition for cloud this is very very simple definition uh, so whenever someone is asking about what is cloud computing you can simply say it refers to the word cloud refers to the network of remote servers that are accessible over the internet in order to store the data manage the data and process the data data is everything right so who is actually using this cloud right so cloud is actually hosted by some third party companies like amazon web services google cloud or azure which is from microsoft so these are the major companies who is actually ruling the cloud uh, market so i just note down only those three but cloud is nothing but a network of remote servers which are accessible over the internet in order to store manage and process the data this uh this basically giving like a lot of uh, different features and that is the reason like people want to use this one so one is like resources on demand and uh, without uh, you know you don't have any infrastructure you can able to use this resources on demand and also you have scalability you have flexibility and cost efficiency i want to show you quickly the practical example of how actually these all things matters so now if you guys see here assume um i want to quickly give you one example assume you buy a laptop okay and uh, you buy a laptop and this laptop is having some let's say some data and uh, this particular uh, it is having let's say some 8 gb of ram right let's say you have some thing called 8 gb ram and uh, also it has let's say i5 processor okay and then you have something called 500 gb hard disk okay so what is this guys guys uh, what is this called like 8 gb ram is to process your memory right it's for memory and i5 is your cpu and 500 gb is hard disk is for to storing all your data assume you bought this laptop and you are storing some data and you are manipulating something and tomorrow you want to uh, do some more things okay then you want to uh, increase your resources right let's say your i5 is not uh, fair enough and you want to move it from i5 to i7 which is not possible with this laptop or with this uh, particular machine isn't it so what you have to do here is either you have to transfer this data to a different machine where it has more configuration and it's really a lot of cost you are have to spend for right then you don't want to use this one so instead of doing this one if someone is saying hey instead of doing like this if you are using my service you can able to use how much you want and based on how much you want you can pay for it is it sounds really good yes right so which is nothing but the cloud service comes in picture here okay guys so there are three concepts guys okay for how this cloud computing is important okay first one is availability okay what is availability Let's assume you have something uh, the data stored in your pen drive or your laptop here, and you are not able to access it 
when you are outside of this laptop or the pen drive isn't it because it is physically present here so instead of the data which is stored physically in the system if it is stored somewhere in the internet right let's say um let's say assume let's say you are just thinking about something called uh, gmail right or google drive google drive right which means what you are trying to do here is you are accessing the mailing service right you are accessing mailing service from google over the internet you are accessing a uh, storage service over the internet from google wherever you have internet you should be able to access this service is it uh, something like uh, very better than uh, this way of storing a data physically right it's nothing but availability guys availability means like anytime if you want you can able to access the data so this is just for your data you are trying to access it. but how it actually matters for the real time companies right company also do, can looking for data other times right because only if the company stores the data if it is able to accessed by the users only then people will start using the system let's assume walmart.com is going down for a couple of minutes then people don't use walmart.com right so similarly if whatever the data whatever the application you are actually building it the data should be accessible 24/7 okay that's nothing but availability second thing is scalability as i told from i5 to i7 it's not possible scalability means it can be uh, scalability means the scalability means it can be uh, up or down right if you can able to um, increase or decrease the power right whatever the power you need like resources you need you can able to increase or decrease the power right the resources power the final one is the final one we call it as pay as you go is based on whatever the resources you are using it only for that particular time only for those resources if you want to pay then you will always choose this option right which is something but like similar to the ott platform like netflix or uh, amazon prime videos right similar to that okay so these three are very important to understand like why cloud computing is very hit in the market and how people or company wants to use cloud computing because of these three reasons very very important to understand what is availability what is scalability what is pay as you go model i hope you guys are very clear with these three things now let me move uh, let me come back to our slides where i want to show you i want to show you is it cloud is very new or is it something like it's already there right let's get into here so guys like the birthplace of cloud computing is not something new okay uh, basically the cloud computing was started in the year 1960 itself um when the mainframe computers uh wants to access the computing power okay access the computing power and data and data over some dump terminals okay uh if you guys remember like in our uh, previous uh, pictures right where we used to see something like internet means some, some cloud uh, cloud diagram within that they will call it as internet right similar to that so it's not something new but it it hit, hit in the market after amazon started in the services in 20 uh, 2006 okay basically guys um uh, we want to understand what is cloud computing very very strong so uh, if you guys remember about 2000s when amazon web series la- launching its uh, ec2 which is one of the cloud computing service we are going to see that in the upcoming uh, slides but uh, ec2 is one of the cloud computing service from amazon okay actually this is the first service which was released by amazon web services in 2006 guys okay and now we are going to see who are all the major players so aws is there azure is there google cloud platform is there IBM cloud is there oracle cloud is there alibaba cloud is there salesforce is there if you guys see here all these big companies wants to do this kind of uh, cloud computing uh, technology so that like they are getting a bigger market because lot of startup companies even established well established companies also wants to use cloud computing is okay this is all about different vendors i hope this is very clear so far now let's see what is client and server architecture is whenever you go to a restaurant right when you try to order something the food so you are going to request the server to do some food back right so what server does server goes back to the kitchen and goes to or talk to chef and chef prepares the actual food and it is serving back to the table which nothing but you are requesting something and you are getting back from the server so whatever you are requesting guys if you guys see here this is a client this is a server okay so let's say this is the person you who it is like whatever uh, the person you are staying there right and uh, and uh, this person is something like uh, whatever the uh, material like you are actually requesting for right there is nothing but request and then whatever you are getting back is nothing but response assume something like walmart.com or google.com right what are the page you are getting back that's nothing but web page right so you are making a request using a browser as a client right 
and you are making a request to google.com that's a dns name domain name space uh, name wherein you are requesting your page and then server is responding back so uh you can think uh, simply uh, like let's say you buy a laptop from a store and uh, you have installed a uh, os and you have installed a chrome browser and then once you have internet connectivity you are trying to hit let's say google.com so what happens is your client or your company uh, your uh, computer acts like a client and is trying to get the data from the server of google and google server is responding back to the google web page which is nothing but the google application is deployed in google server and server is actually looking into the google application and it is giving it is giving back to you as a web page right so it can be a laptop it can be a mobile phone it can be anything right it can be a system whatever it is so anything you are trying to able to access server over the internet guys so this is very important over the internet you are trying to get some data from the server where you are requesting the server and server is responding back as a response i hope this is also very clear guys right now let's quickly look, in, look into what are the different service models we have what do you mean by service models as i told you here right server is basically serving you right which is something but you are looking for something where you are requesting server and server is responding back and we call that whatever the response is nothing but a service right you are actually looking for a service and the server is responding back isn't it so what are different types of service models we have right based on what you are requesting and what you are looking for they have classified the service models into like four types okay one is on premise okay on premise nothing but whatever you want to do everything is in premise on your environment there's nothing in cloud okay the first one is iifs okay and second one is pass and saas these are very very basic model guys okay uh basically iis is nothing but infrastructure as a service pass is something but platform as a service saas is something but software as a service let's try to understand what is infrastructure what is platform what is software is assume you bought a laptop and once you bought a laptop you need to connect that laptop with another computer so you need network right you need networking and now after you connect the laptop you are actually uh, storing the data whatever you are trying to use it right so you need a storage okay and whatever you are trying to access it let's say servers right on top of it you have virtualizations and then on the virtualization only you have os right whatever the os you have and you might need info middleware and whatever you are trying to do is all about data right and uh, let's say you want to uh, write some program in java and you want to run uh, so let's say hello world in java all right which means like you need jvm which is nothing but java virtual machine which is nothing but runtime environment right so let's say runtime environment you need and then applications right applications means like let's say whatever you building on top of it right hello world is an application right so these are all about all the things whatever you do if you do on your laptop it's nothing but on premise on premise is nothing but whatever you do if it's not in cloud then it's nothing but on premise okay now let's talk about what is infrastructure as a service is the name itself is telling you are getting infrastructure as a service who is giving the service the third party vendors right so if you are looking for infrastructure from the third party then you can ask for hey amazon or hey uh, azure can you guys give me only the infrastructure as a service today then you can go for ias that particular service model we call it as ias if you guys see here ias actually provides computing resources such as virtual machine storage and networking so let's get see here this diagram guys if you guys see here if you have networking on your side right and uh, uh uh if you have storage servers and virtualization and networking everything from the vendor and if you are having a os middleware data runtime environment application on your side then we call it as infrastructure here infrastructure is nothing but this is nothing but infrastructure guys this area is nothing but infrastructure this particular infrastructure is given by the vendor okay as a service you are getting it okay so if you are getting the infrastructure from the server like from the service as a as a service from the vendor then we call it as infrastructure as a service i hope this is very clear right so whenever you are looking for infrastructure from the third party vendor that you can able to get it as a service that is nothing but infrastructure as a service now let's talk about platform as a service what is platform as a service in platform as a service along with the internet uh, along with infrastructure along with infrastructure if you are also getting os data and middleware from the vendor on top of infrastructure if you are all also getting operating systems middleware and data from the vendor then that model is something but platform as a service what do you mean by platform as a service is 
uh, everything you get it from the entire platform will be you are getting from third party vendors okay and uh, what you do is you just simply install jvm and then start writing hello world and then just just executing it it's something but only the runtime and the applications will be managed on your side and all the rest of the things will be managed by the cloud vendors it can be any vendor okay i'm not talking about aws uh, specifically but it can be any vendor okay now let's talk about saas what is saas model guys so a typical example for saas is nothing but gmail or google drive i'm giving two examples because you are getting mailing service from google over the internet we really don't care about uh, what is their networking how they are doing uh, how they are storing my mail and how they are actually handling the servers visualization what ways they are using it middleware what data they are doing it and what is their runtime what is their application we never know it so we are getting the actual service right the actual software as a service right the entire software itself we are getting it from third party vendor as a service if you guys remember this entire thing will be taken care by third party vendor then we call that as software as a service i hope this is very clear guys right so whatever you do if it's nothing in the internet uh, whatever you do uh, whatever you are looking for if you are not requesting anything from the cloud uh, third party vendor then we call everything on your local machine on on your data center we call it as on premise if you are looking for infrastructure which is something but virtualization server storage and networking from third party vendor that the third party vendor is giving back to us as a service over the internet that we call it as infrastructure as a service if you are getting platform as a service right from platform itself is a service from the third party vendor then that model is nothing but platform as a service if you guys see here what is the difference between iaas and pass along with infrastructure you are also getting the platform what is the platform os middleware data these are all nothing but the entire stuff the tech stack is something but platform guys even if you are not managing application even if you are not managing at time then the entire things will be handled by third party vendor if third party vendor is giving everything as a service like gmail or g drive then we call that as saas model which is nothing but software as a service the entire software itself is given as a service to us okay guys i hope this is very clear now let's talk about deployment model what i mean by deployment first right let's try to understand the deployment guys like whatever the application you start developing it it has to go to server and uh, then only it can be accessed by multiple clients right is nothing but deployment deployment is nothing but like moving the code from one environment to another environment or putting your code to server so that it can be processed and it can be responded back by the whenever client is asking like the server can able to respond back now there are like you know four models they are uh, classifying it based on how we are going to deploy that particular applications guys first one is public cloud so public cloud is something but uh, it can be accessed over the internet publicly okay and it is managed by third party vendors okay and it's also having uh, you know like a pay per use basis like how much you want you can able to use it and only for the amount of resource we use only for that we have to pay for what is private cloud so private cloud is nothing but there is like something like a private network not everyone can able to access it there should be something like a dedicated infrastructure will be there and uh, which is actually owned by some individual organization let's say your company wants to handle uh, your data very secure when compared to publicly they don't want to access it then you can go for private cloud yes. okay what is hybrid cloud so hybrid cloud is basically the combination of public and private cloud guys sometimes like they uh, organization want to have both public and private and, and it's kind of mix and match they want to do it so that they they can go for choosing uh, some data in the uh, you know private and some data in the public then we call that as a hybrid cloud what is community cloud so community cloud is something like a group of organization okay so let's say uh, healthcare industries right so group of organizations they are grouped together and uh, because they have some similar needs and requirements right so in this case in that case what they do they can create something called community cloud in which like the same industry or same domain whatever they are like they can create their own cloud environment which is nothing but community cloud i hope this is also very clear guys right so the different deployment models we have in cloud computing okay now let's move on to the next one what are the different advantages and disadvantages of using cloud computing guys as i told you advantages are nothing but uh scalability of course whenever you want to increase your scale or reduce your resources you can able to do it with cloud computing cost efficiency because of that you are going to pay only for what you use then cost is of course it is a beneficial for the companies to use cloud computing flexibility let's say if i don't like it right then i can simply go ahead and then i don't want to use it anymore right as long as i have internet connection i can able to access any cloud right and reliability guys um any cloud computing company let's say amazon google or um, azure they always says that okay they are giving 
maximum uptime where it is like something like the servers will never go down at all so that like you can able to rely on these kind of cloud computing companies to move forward with deploying your applications over there and security there is no compromise on the security right basically uh, they always taken care of all the security measures and vulnerabilities threats and this and that for related to security for each and every uh, company because their data is very important right so data should be secure it might have some pa data like the personal information data right so data security is also advantages because otherwise you have to do uh, security engineer you have to uh, make sure like your servers are up and running all the times but advantages are these are the advantages now let's quickly see what are the disadvantages of it of course guys without internet you cannot access these services right so internet is the biggest disadvantage in, in means like it's, it's a dependency we have okay and data privacy so even though uh, the data is stored in uh, aws or azure or dcp still companies are like worried about okay how they are going to handle all the sensitive data right and also there is a limited control okay uh, let's say uh, whenever i want to uh, have something right the organizations uh, to customize what they want is little limited so that's one of the disadvantages of using cloud computing and migration complexity is one of the headache because whenever you want to move the application from uh, non premise to cloud or within the cloud or from one cloud to another cloud always the migration is a very complex and where all the team has to be sit together and understand like what are we going to do what is the strategy how are we going to do this so this is things like with nothing but like little uh, i can say disadvantages of using cloud computing and vendor lock in case in this case like let's say if you lock the vendor let's say aws or gcp uh, because of getting better pricing they we have to lock in like it means like we have to agree say that okay we are going to have our data on your servers let's say for next two years or three years and then like we can get some more discounts and what so these are the disadvantages of using uh, cloud computing is and uh, let me quickly ask you one thing how is it going to help our it career yes there is a huge demand for it uh, especially for it jobs with respect to cloud computing and it's always good to know that you are learning something new uh, skills which is very in demand skills and also you can also make some you know remote uh, our opportunities and also it's definitely going to uh, save a lot of cost for the client and also there are a lot of opportunities for cloud computing side okay let me quickly touch upon two things guys okay one is amazon uh, why uh, what is amazon or what is aws so amazon is something but a multi uh, billion dollar company um, in seattle usa right and it started in 1995 by jeff bezos and then also uh, it started as a, like a uh, you know like uh, delivering uh, ebook readers or something like that okay but uh, amazon web series is something but another company like amazon web series is aws uh, basically they are ready to give cloud computing services in 2006 they are the one who actually launched their first service ec2 in 2006 okay uh, as i told you amazon web series something but a collection of remote computing services that together make up a cloud computing platform okay make sure like they are making a cloud computing platform and with the help of all the remote uh, all the remote uh, servers okay and uh, right now they have like uh, 32 geographical regions and uh, um, each region is fully contained within a single country okay now we will see like what is a region and what is available zone and much more but try to understand like there are 32 geographical regions as of today okay and um, what actually aws offers to us is something but the availability scalability and pay as you go availability means like 19.99% they are going to give a promise that they are going to make sure like their applications uh, whatever we are going to deploy on their servers are up and running second thing is scalability of course like you can start with scale uh, cloud computing and pay as you go also is very one of the beautiful concept wherein like every cloud computing or even aws azure gcp every cloud computing uh, vendors are offering these three i hope this is very clear guys right if you are very new to our channel go ahead and then subscribe to it and also make sure like you hit the thumbs up button if you guys like this video and also please hit the notification button so that you don't miss any of our future videos i will see you in the next interesting video guys until then bye bye